You want cheese? Yeah. Okay, get him, get him the cheese. Guys, if you have the ability to comment down below, let me know that this is coming through clear because I have it in the spot that it normally doesn't. So if you can comment down below, comment down below. I'm just going to chop a little bit of cheese for the little guy here. He actually just woke up from a really late nap. So I'm going to deal with that first. And then we're going to get started on cutting up some chicken to make shake and bake chicken. That's what we're making tonight with some delicious sides. Let's see, which knife should I use? Maybe that one. <laughs> maybe this one. Whoop, maybe not this one. <laughs> Trying my best, William. I hope you're not going to be picky. <laughs> Silly little man. You wouldn't be picky, would you? And hopefully you like sharp cheddar cheese because that's what your sister grabbed. Here you go. Apple An apple? Okay. So look at you all set on up. That's what big sisters are for. All right, Bree is here helping me tonight, so that's nice. All right, guys, my old apron is back, so I'm just going to show it so nobody gets offended, you know. So my aprons are all dirty, guys. It's been a really busy week. So thank you, brother, for the apron. Okay, let's move on, shall we? Over here. <laughs> We have a whole chicken. We, we grew this chicken here on the farm, and so it's got a neck and everything still attached here. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, chop this up into pieces. And I figured that that might be something that some of you guys don't know how to do, and so I figured I'd take you guys along with for this. And then we'll get going on our seasoning, and then it'll be great. So let me find a good knife to do this with. Too many options. Okay, so I always cut the skin right behind the leg first, and I handle the legs first. Everybody has their own way of doing things. Oh, you know what's really good is when I put your knife up there. Can you reach it? I'll get down my butcher knife. That'll really cut through it good. Hang on one second. This new knife set I got has a nice knife sharpener right in the block. Okay, so I'm just cutting away at the skin, I'm trying to make it so you guys can see, between the leg and the breast. And then you basically just feel where the leg bends. I usually cut up from the back. And we're just trying to find the joint between the lower leg and the thigh. You could also cut from the front as well. You getting this brief? Okay. You could also cut from the front as well. Um, I can't tell which way it is. Hang on. Some of these, these are Freedom Rangers, so their legs are like longer than a standard chicken. There we go. That's what I thought. Just hadn't gone far enough. So there is one chicken leg. And then I basically lay the chicken on its side and I rotate the thigh outward away from the, the breast and try to cut this skin. And you'll actually hear it like snap in the joint and then you can cut downward right through the joint. There's a thigh. Hope you guys are seeing this okay. It's not very zoomed in. Hang on one second. See if I can get you guys closer. So it's not about watching the back of my head. All right, let's see what we can do, guys. So just hang out here for just a second. There, that will be better. All right, <clears throat> then comes the wing. And there's just a joint way up here at the top of the wing that it kind of rotates in. And so then I start cutting towards that general area. And once again, like bending it and trying to feel where that joint is. There it is. Okay, so we're just going to finish cutting this up. I'm going to do the breast here. I always breast last. Um, I'm just going to finish cutting up this whole chicken. 
because most of you that are going to be making this recipe are going to be buying your chickens from a farmer or a whole chicken because it's cheaper. Um, plus, you can use the bones to make an amazing bone broth. Um, some of the carcass is still going to have meat on it, so technically you could just make a chicken broth. I do have a video up here on how to do that up on the channel. And uh, that's what the rest of the chicken that we don't get to do shake and bake with is going to go into is a nice stock. Okay, another thigh, another wing, and once you've cut up a couple of chickens, it goes pretty fast because you have it memorized. Okay, I really want to um, not, usually chickens from the store don't have this, but this is the tail of the chicken. I'm going to go ahead and batter this up too because that's really delicious. All right, then for the breasts, um, there is a bone that runs right down the middle. It divides the two breasts apart. And I just take my knife and try and find that bone. We're going to go right to the side of the bone. And then we're just going to work our way down following the bone with our knife to kind of pull away the meat from that bone and the carcass in general. It's not as hard as it seems. And this is a wishbone right here that divides over the neck of the chicken. If you just take your knife straight down it, it'll help you to get that breast off. Yeah, you wanna hold it? Go ahead, hold it still, Brie. It's trying to run away. <laughs> it's gonna be a nice sized chicken breast. There we go. All right. This this chicken actually has um, a double breast, which is what this one is, which is considered like a breast tenderloin, a tenderloin chicken breast. And then this is the upper breast, so that's kind of cool. This one got nice and big. All right. And now time for the other one. Flip it around so you can still hold it once I get this bone uncovered, okay? Mm -hmm. And Brie is going to be our shaker tonight when we go to make the shake and bake chicken. There we go. I um, also went ahead and um, the next week's live is already pre-scheduled. So if you're someone who likes to click on that and click the notify me button so you don't forget that we've gone live, that is up already. Um, and in the description are all of the ingredients for next week as well. So if you want to go shopping between now and next week and get those ingredients so you can cook with me, they are all up there. All right, this is the second breast. Look at that. It's another, another double breast. Check that out. Very happy, healthy chicken. <laughs> all right. Now I'm probably going to, this whole thing is going to go into a pot behind me, and like I said, I'll make some stock out of it. I'm going to go ahead and cut these chicken breasts down a little bit because, you know, it's just me and the kids eating tonight. Uh, Jeremiah has his Tuesday night Bible study, so he won't be joining us, but the kids and I don't need a whole breast. So I'm going to cut the breast into thirds. You can leave your chicken however large you'd like. Um, like I I leave my skin on all of my chicken, and if you can buy your chicken inside the store with the skin on it, that's much healthier for you. It has vitamin A in it. Um, when you remove that, that skin, you remove the vitamin A, which is what your body needs to help process the meat you're eating. So um, just make sure you buy meat with skin still on. The dogs are howling outside. Isn't that nice? <laughs> I'm going to wash my hands, and then we're going to get to doing the seasoning for the shake and bake chicken. Yeah, you better watch your hands too, huh? Put some soap on there. I'm so glad you got on tonight. We're going to be making sides and everything. Um, it's going to be fun. Hey, Rhonda. Rhonda's back. Thanks for coming back, Rhonda. There are two other people on here too, but you're not commenting, so I'm not sure who you are, but I'm here as well. Okay, so for the shake and bake chicken, this is going to bake at 425 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and preheat the oven to 425. 
Bree's working it. There she is. Got it? 425, sweetie. All right. So we're going to come back down here. All right, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a baggie. This is a reuse reusable bag. It's been washed. So it has a different writing on it, but we're going to reuse it. All right. So Ziploc bag. She's just going to hold it open. I'm going to go ahead and put the spices into here. So the first ingredient is one cup of breadcrumbs. So I actually made, I've been working on the cookbook guys. It is done and I'm planning on sending it off to the publisher on Saturday. So part of that was coming up with a delicious bread that was just a soaked bread, meaning flour, apple cider vinegar, water sort of mix. Very, very easy for anyone to get into. And these are the breadcrumbs from that bread. I went ahead and took some bread and I went ahead and ground it. Did you start, I couldn't find you. I was about three minutes late guys. Sorry about that. I am here now though. Who was that, Jackie? Jackie, yeah. Okay, so I used a food processor um, to go ahead and turn it into little um, breadcrumbs, okay? Uh, but you sure could take the bread and just rub it between your fingers to make little crumbs. So for every two pounds of chicken, you're going to need uh, one cup of breadcrumbs. Oh good, can't wait. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm excited to have the cookbook done, you guys, because it's been a long week. And there are 225 recipes in the cookbook. I was at like 223, and I was like, I should just add in the recipes we've made in the lives. So this one will be into the cookbook, and last week's will be into the cookbook. Let's see. What am I looking for? I forgot. All right, so we need one cup of breadcrumbs. This is a half a cup measurement, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick it right into the bag. It smells good. The reason why you would want to make your own shake and bake coating is because shake and bake has stuff in it you don't want, okay? So, you know, chemicals, MSG, um, if anything you buy into the store says spices on it, um, and you contact the... Um, per, the manufacturer and they won't tell you what spices is it's because spices is another word for MSG so okay so one cup of breadcrumbs then we're going to need one teaspoon of healthy salt where did I put them where did I put them they were out here oh right there Jeez, they could have bit me if they were a snake guys one teaspoon of healthy salt so healthy salt is colored salt so pink Himalayan salt real salt Celtic sea salt that's gray all really good salts so one teaspoon of healthy salt Next ingredient is one teaspoon of paprika powder. Okay. Next ingredient is half of a teaspoon of pepper, which I'm going to have to grind down into there. I was going to grind that earlier and then I forgot. Where's that? There it is. Okay, so I'm all right, so I'm going to do some grinding over here of the pepper. <laughs> but if you guys have already ground up pepper, it is a half of a teaspoon of pepper. <laughs> there we go. All right, that smells peppery. Whew. Okay, garlic powder is the next ingredient. Half of a teaspoon of garlic powder. into the bag. I love that everything just goes into the bag. It's so easy. Um, half of a teaspoon of powder. There you go. And I'm glad I have a good assistance, you know, she's shaking it up. All right, half of a teaspoon of basil. Okay, half of a teaspoon of oregano. Smell good, Brie? Oh, good. It smells like pizza. Does it? <laughs> and then half of a teaspoon of parsley. There we go. All right, so what Bree's going to do now is she's going to close the bag up. She's going to shake the bag. And then, you got it? Uh -huh. Okay. And then back here on the burner, I have put some butter in a saucepan. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over medium heat. We're just going to melt it. So the original um, shake and bake calls for olive oil or vegetable oil. And obviously neither one of those things we want to be baking. They are not, oopsie, 
want to do that. Wrong burner. Um, those are not healthy fats. They're not a semi-solid at room temperature, so we don't want to be baking with those fats. So I'm swapping it out for butter. So four tablespoons of butter back there. We have a nice little paintbrush. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the butter as soon as it's melted here onto the chicken. And then we're going to put it in Bree's bag and she's going to shake it. You know what else we should do while we're waiting for the butter to be melted? We should grease that pan with healthy fat. Like lard? Like lard. <laughs> lard, tallow, coconut oil, um, butter, any of those sort of things would be good. But lard is to the left on the top. Yep. Right there. We use lard around here. I, I don't really prefer the taste of tallow, although I would eat it if that's all I had for healthy fat. I'm a pork girl, so look out. <laughs> all right, we're almost ready here. Is this still really hot? Oh, it's not too bad. Almost had the excitement of a 13 by nine glass pan exploding. That would have been fun. Okay, so she is just gonna coat the pan with lard. And then we're gonna move on to the next step here. She's gonna be shaking like crazy. I don't know if you guys can see the mix, but it looks a lot like the um, shake and bake mix you buy that come in the little packets. What are you doing, Bree? Oh, you need a spoon? Get it out. Okay. That's fine. Bree's just working away. Woo! Where's Carl? Carl was the one who said, well, we want Bree next week. Where are you at, bud? <laughs> uh, Deborah, I'd like to read the labels to make my own stuff. Yeah. A lot of times you can unless there's quote unquote spices and then they don't want to tell you what the spices are or it's MSG. But you can get stuff pretty darn close if you just read the labels in, in the store. And if you're open to experimenting with how much of each thing is in there. Perfect, Brie. That's great. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start coating the chicken. You're going to hold this open, but maybe don't touch it on here quite yet. Got it? I need that. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to just, just going to brush the chicken here with, um, yeah, I think MSG has like 40 different names or something. That's really crazy. All right, so I'm just going to brush the chicken with the melted butter. Okay. I don't have to do back too, huh? Yeah. The back's already gooey. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to give you a couple pieces and you can shake them together. All right. Seal it on up and shake away, girl. You got to shake them for the camera so they can watch you shake. I remember doing it as a kid. All right, what are they looking like? Are they getting coated? Oh yeah, look at that, see? All right, so then we take them out and then go over there. Hold it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Gotta show the people how coated they are. Nice and coated, guys. It's gonna go right over here onto the baking sheet. And then we're gonna do it all over again. <laughs> I always love when we make a meal that, hey, you're going to hold it open. A meal that I used to make as a kid with the processed food, but now my kids get to remember baking it. I just think that's so cool. We had a memory like that this last weekend because we got some, um, some round bales from someone. And at first my husband didn't want to get a round bale because how are we going to move it? And I said, I used to roll those all the time as a teenager. It'll be a fun family memory. And you know what? We had the farmer take one of the 1800 pound round bales and bail it into four smaller ones. And um, we all rolled it. It was a blast. We rolled all four of them as a group. All right. Might have to make some more, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. What it's looking like. So it's looking like we're running low on the coating. So I think we're probably, after this batch, going to go ahead and make another batch of the coating. So just for reference, that was one around five pound whole chicken. So you're going to want to double this recipe if you're going to be using um, the parts off of a five pound chicken. 
Got it? Yep. Yeah, Looking okay? okay? All right. We'll just move them back on over there. Yeah, nice and coated. Very good, Brie. <laughs> it's kind of fun, isn't it? Uh-huh. I enjoyed it. When I was your age. <laughs> I went down the aisle for the shake and bake just to see what flavors they had. And so I thought they had more than one flavor. Like back when I used to eat it when I was a kid, like 20-ish years ago, um, I was pretty sure that they had more than one flavor, but I don't see it anymore. So I don't know what's up with that. Okay, so this was approximately one cup of breadcrumbs went back in there. And we're just going to repeat the same thing we've already done. So one teaspoon of healthy salt into the bag and we've got one teaspoon of paprika yep is there a comment okay let me look breeze our comment patrol too uh no it was just 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 youtube all right one teaspoon of paprika tell me about it okay we've got some pepper half of a teaspoon ready can you hold the bag open for me should be yummy I can't wait okay pepper garlic powder we need half of a teaspoon I think there was still like a little piece of chicken in there like a, oh it is that's okay just leave it in there we'll shake it around okay half of a teaspoon of garlic half of a teaspoon of onion powder Here you go break okay I'm gonna sneeze again half of a teaspoon of oregano it goes half of a teaspoon of basil and half of a teaspoon of parsley there we go put my lids back on and I'm gonna butter up some chicken and off we go you ready Brie? think so all right here it comes already coated enough. Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> that one's going to be a little extra seasoned. There you go. Just watch the bag on that burner because I don't want to get cooled off all the way yet, okay? Okay, let's move this this way. It's fine. Okay. Coat that chicken. There we go. Do you fit one more? Yeah. Or two more, maybe? Or Probably one? one more. One more? Okay. There you go. Shake away, Brie. Is it all going to fit on here? Maybe we're going to need another pan. <clears throat> mm, just might. Mm. It's all that breast meat that was on that pan. That's kind of crazy. I think we can do it, Brie. Got it? All right. Is it good? Just a little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's pull it on out. Okay. This, is, this edge is real coated. Yeah, it is. Put it on in there. There you go. And we can put the other drumstick so that the big ends here, you know, so that they kind of fit. The in other one's hands. right there, though. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just saying, if it, there you go. It'll be okay. It'll all cook on up. All right, so we just got a couple more pieces of chicken. I know, I think it's the pepper in there that's getting me too. <laughs> pepper or paprika? I just put a piece in there, so don't grab that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, more butter. And then one more wing. All right. Shake it up, Bree, shake it up. Get out another little pan. Do you think we need it? Sure. Probably, yeah. Okay. No problem. I'll grab another one. All right. Like this, or a big one. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Ok
bigger. That's just this is good. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and grease the pan for her, you guys, while she's been a shake shaking over there. Shake shaking. Once again, I'm um, greasing this up uh, with some lard. You sure could use duck fat, goose fat, tallow, coconut oil, or butter. Okay, and it goes. Good job, Brie. This one might need to be shaked. Okay, well, just close it down up and shake it some more. Perfect, you're doing great. So while she's shaking that, we're going to go ahead and make a steak fry seasoning. Um, this recipe, again, is inside the cookbook that's coming on out. Uh, we're going to be making some steak fries to go with this. So you just need a little dish. Okay. And to the dish, we're going to add two teaspoons of paprika. This is a really good steak fry seasoning. Go ahead, that's fine. Okay, so two teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of garlic powder. Okay. Two teaspoons of chili powder, just way up here. Okay. And two teaspoons of onion powder. Easy recipe. It's preheated, Brie. Do you feel comfortable putting them into the oven or you want mom to do it? Okay. So the oven is preheated to 425 degrees. So um, Brie's going to go ahead and move the, it's okay, move the um, chicken Bottom in. Or top? Uh, the middle one there. Right there? <laughs> right here, honey. <laughs> Man, that pepper's getting to us. <laughs> We're out here sneezing. Good job. Okay. There we go. All right. So we've got the steak fry seasoning. I'm just stirring it. We're going to go ahead and grease a another pan. Another pan for our french fries. This is technically a jelly roll pan because um, it has sides. I just say it's a cookie sheet, but I know that's not correct. So we are going to use this stoneware here. We're going to grease it on. I'm going to go wash off some potatoes. We're going to grease it up with some more lard. How's that lard working for you? Good. Okay. Oh man, her nose. <laughs> it's a good sinus clear out, my recipe. <laughs> Holy cow. If you're cooking dinner tonight, put down in the comments below what you're cooking, just out of curiosity. No judgment. <laughs> All right, whoops, our light, sorry guys. Okay. You got it good? Yeah. All right, I've got my little cutting board here. We're gonna cut these into steak fries. So you just cut them in half and then you just kind of go at an angle with your knife to create a wedge. And onto the baking sheet they go. And she's gonna arrange them all nice and pretty. You guys can't even see that, hang on a second. 
She's lining them all out so they can have exactly the same amount of seasoning. See that? Good job, Bree. <laughs> it's nice having a little helper. <laughs> We're also going to fill a stock pot, or a not stock pot, a saucepan on the back there with some water. And we're going to do some frozen green beans, and I'm going to chop up a few carrots. And that will be our meal for tonight. We do a lot of meals, um, which you guys have probably already figured this out, uh, with meat and vegetables of some sort. When you eat that way, um, and you have a garden, you can grow a lot of your own food, which is great. Because you can't exactly grow um, pasta. <laughs> in your garden. You could make pasta if you grow your own wheat, but a lot of us don't have the space or the equipment to do that. So that fly is going to die here eventually. My husband took out the window air conditioning unit this weekend and left the door open. So we've been under attack since then, trying to get them all under control. They all come in so quickly. Okay. Next week is Mexican lasagna, so that'll be a good one. I'm going to be making the grain-free version, so if you are low-carb, you're going to love it. Um, but you sure could go buy some sprouted corn tortillas or make corn tortillas. I have that recipe up here on the channel as well. I think I washed too many potatoes, Brie. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just like one more, huh? I think. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I gotta chop that one. Yeah. You're gonna have to fit a few extras in there. Tell them to roll over. Yeah. Roll over. All right. This is our pretty mix we just made for the um, steak fry seasoning. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and sprinkle it on over the potatoes. And these typically bake at 425 just for baking the chicken. So we're just going to slide them onto the top rack above the chicken. And let them bake along with. There we go. Sample. Into the oven it goes. Easy, 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 easy. Okay, so now on to the vegetables that are in the back. So the back stock pot back there, or stock pot, sauce pan. I've been typing those recipes like crazy. I got stock pot in my brain. We're going to go ahead and put it over medium high heat. Bree is going to dump the remaining green beans into the pot. I'm going to grab some carrots. And I'll be right back, guys. You can just put it in the dark. The other one that we use, we can go. All right. Carrots. Where did I put my... Oh, there it is. <laughs> like, where did I put my chopping board? Okay. All right. There's the carrots. We're going to get them chopped real quick. You can chop them however you want to chop them. Uh, we got green beans, so maybe I'll do thin little strips like green beans because that's kind of pretty. There you go. It's so nice having a helper, man. I don't have to put them in the pot. She's just all over it. <laughs> Good job, Brie. Mm -hmm. How was your day, Brie? <laughs> oh, other than this. Pepper going up your nose. Anything else? Good. <laughs> My nose is like running on just like one side from the pepper. <laughs> that is the one disadvantage to using freshly ground pepper is it's so strong that, you know, it can do that to you. I was going to, hang on, I was going to grind it um, 
earlier and I just completely forgot. Yeah. I've also um, cut the carrots like this to make carrot fries. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Pepper. <laughs> oh my gosh. Come watch my live cooking class where I sneeze. We've both been sneezing. Non-stop for 10 minutes. My goodness. Yeah. All right, we're almost done. And then we're gonna just turn that, that's already on over medium high heat. We're gonna find the lid. Did you find the lid, Bree? Yeah, I can find it. Okay, and then we're gonna put a lid on it and we're gonna steam those on up while everything else is cooking. And then we've got some subject to talk about. So stick around guys, don't go anywhere. Like I said, next week is the Mexican um, casserole. So, um, the pre-scheduled events already up here on the channel. You guys can go ahead and click remind me or notify me, whatever it says, um, to be notified next week when I go live. And I've already typed all of the um, ingredients in the description of that event. So it's all right where you need it. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for your help, Bree. Hi say, and oh, goodbye. You want to say hi to Carl, though? Is that on yeah. here? Hi, Carl. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure he'll catch the replay, Brie, and then he'll say, oh, he'll say something down below. Okay, guys, here comes the topics for the night. So next week's Mexican lasagna. We already talked about that. The next thing I want to talk about is, oh, hey, Deborah. Um, oh, I'm missing comments. Sorry, you guys. Hang on a second. Brie and I didn't see it through all the sneezing. Okay, yeah, Deborah. I'll have to duck out in about 10 minutes. I'll catch the replay. Okay. Hi, Deborah. I'm so glad you came tonight. Um, Diana's back. Yes. That's awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So what I want to talk about really quick, I get nothing if you guys listen to me. Okay. So just so you know, I don't get paid for this or anything. Um, a lot of times in my videos, I uh, talk about the Weston A. Price Foundation. It's driving me nuts. Cutting my forehead off. Hang on a second. <laughs> I know you guys probably don't care. Um... I talk about the Wesley Price Foundation a lot in some of my videos, and so I'm just going to give a shout out to them. Um, they're an amazing organization that's a worldwide organization. Um, they pay for their own research in using people's um, money that is donated to the foundation. And they research food farming and the healing arts, and they make suggestions um, based on that instead of what is recommended by people right now in the United States and all over the world for nutrition. So what I wanted to say is that they offer memberships, um, annual memberships, it's only $40, you guys, and your money all goes into research. So with that $40, you get a shopper's guide, which lists off all of the different foods that they recommend. They've already looked into these products. They've already asked all of the questions that you need to ask, and they are they have amazing nourishing ingredients in them. You don't have to question what's in them. That comes with your shopping guide. They also send you three or four pamphlets um, on different subjects. And then four times a year, you get one of these, which is absolutely amazing. These are their quarterly journals, and in them they have all of the latest research that your money's going towards, guys. Um, and this one, it talks about um, sulfur and sulfate in garlic. Um, also, um, getting to the uh, root of obesity, um, what is uh, new underneath the sun, about why sunscreen's not safe in this episode here. Reducing home radiation exposure, which we're going to talk about tonight. And living on the Mediterranean, they're talking about the true Mediterranean diet. So anyway, this is chock full of a ton of information. You get four of these, okay, a year with your $40 um, membership. The other thing that's available on www.westonaprice.org is all of their conference recordings. You can buy them in this form, so you have it at your house, um, or you can buy it per recording. Um, but you guys can see, I'm just gonna scroll, look at all those. That's one year's conference recordings. Everything from um, presentations about the GAPS diet to how to starve cancer. Um, if cancer is natural, what is the cure? Um, just all sorts of things. And this is from 2018, so this is an older one. But they do offer that all online. Um, you can order it even and pay for it online. It's an instant download. Um, I think they're about $20, and um, that's like usually a two or three hour presentation by a doctor, okay? So definitely worth checking into their website. Okay, then a cookbook update. Let's talk about the cookbook. So I just finished it, just finished, 
like two hours ago, editing my cookbook. I'm gonna have to go back and do one more final edit because I wanna make sure all the ingredients are correct. Everything is great um, before I submit to the publisher on Saturday, okay? So depending on how long it takes me to upload and you know arrange the pages and everything else of the cookbook will depend on how long it takes until the publisher, you know, I have a price for you guys and we can start pre-orders. So the details on the cookbook are, I have 225 recipes coming your way. Um, and that's a variety of recipes. That's everything from um, breakfasts to seasonings to um, sauces and salad dressings, main course meals, soups, desserts, snacks. Um, let's see what else. Canning recipes, everything I can up every year, those recipes are going to be in there. Um, let's see what else. Chicken feed, goose feed, you know, duck feed, all that is all on there. Basically everything that's on the channel right now, all 100 and whatever, uh, 150 I think we're up to, uh, videos are all in the cookbook. So there's no more going back and having to watch videos to get ingredients or how to's unless you need more than a written, written direction. All the videos will still be on here, but it sure is a great idea to own the hard copy just in case something ever happens to my channel or YouTube in general. So just keep it in mind. That's going to be coming hot off the press. And as soon as I have a price and as soon as I have um, the way we're going to go about selling the books, I will make an individual video on that. It'll be posted here on the channel so that you guys can follow the links and order one for yourself. Or two. Christmas is coming. Um, okay, so then the last thing I want to talk about is smart meter protection. Um, a lot of us have smart meters in our homes. If you don't know if your electric meter or your water meter are smart technology, all you have to do is go walk up to them and see, is it a digital screen or is it an analog where the numbers roll? If the numbers are rolling, you're perfectly fine. If the numbers are digital, you have a smart meter. So. I'm not going to go too in-depth, but smart meters put out a ton of electromagnetic frequencies, which affects your body. It's a, it's a form of radiation, um, and obviously living next to these things is not a good idea. So the website that I've ordered from in the past is um, www.smartmeterguard.com. They have sales every now and then that are great. Um, they sell, um, they're made in America, which I absolutely love. Um, they sell like a metal cage that goes over top of your smart meter. And they also sell um, copper bags that fit over top of your water meter inside your home. Um, and what that does is it makes it so that when it's sending signals, it's not sending it out. It's, it's basically hitting the metal and bouncing back. Um, so it reduces your EMF exposure by up to 98%, depending on what your situation is. Um, so it's a really good idea. Um, they also make um, covers for gas meters and things like um, Wi-Fi router cages, all sorts of things. So again, that website was www.smartmeterguard.com. Um, let's see. So one other thing I wanted to mention about EMFs is that you can also find and buy um, material that's made out of copper. If you are a sewer and you are comfortable using alternative fabrics, it's a fabric that's literally woven um, metal, okay? Um, I'll show you what I have over here in just a second. Um, but you could make your own bags to go over top of, like, say, your gas meter or your water meter. Um, not necessarily your smart meter for your home for electric because that's probably outside. But for the things that are inside your home, you sure could make a little bag with that copper fabric. So one, little, um, one other little idea. Um, another big source of EMF in your home is your uh, electric panel. So let me take you over here and show you what I've done. So, I'm going to turn on the light here, hang on. Can you guys see it? Okay. So over here, <clears throat> I have two photo boards. I bought these at um, Hobby Lobby, okay, they were on sale big photo boards, but you would never know by looking, but I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully, Behind this one is my panel, my electric panel. So what I did was I took um, this from Hobby Lobby and I hot glue and stapled, you guys can see that. That's all the copper fabric I'm trying to tell you about, okay? 
And then this just simply hangs right over my meter, or right over my, um, sorry, not meter, my electric panel. And now I just hide it, so I don't have an ugly electric panel inside my house, but it also is reflecting the EMFs that are coming out of it. So it's a great idea. I see the comments. Hang on one second, guys. I'm going to move you guys back over here. Okay. Check in the comments. Okay, do you have sources for recipes like kefir start? So I have recipes for kefir. It's actually key fear, which I don't like the word fear, so my mind goes to the other pronunciation. So I have how to make kefir. Um, I've always just had kefir grains that I send to people um, because they multiply like crazy. <laughs> um, so I don't know how to make a kefir starter if that's what you're asking um i know like culturesforhealth.com sells i know they sell at least a one-time kefir thing but they might sell the grains as well um you're looking for like dehydrated uh kefir grains so look for that online okay but i do have a how to make kefir once you have the grains next question um Deborah's, uh hang on a second Jackie says, if that doesn't allow the signal to send, won't the electric company complain? They, you most likely will get a phone call. Uh, what happened with me is uh, on my smart meter, when we built the house, I demanded that the smart meter be 40 feet away from my home um, because I know what it does. And so we actually way out, about 40 feet away is our electric smart meter. And then we paid additional money to have the electric line brought in from there. I just did not want it on my home. Um, so anyway, I put one of the, the smart meter guard meters on there. And it was really funny because when I originally talked to them, they said, we really, really recommend you put it on the side of your house. And I said, I don't want it on the side of my house. And he said, why? And I said, because it gives off electromagnetic, electromagnetic frequencies, which is radiation. He tried to tell me that it didn't, that it was completely safe. There is no sending a um, reading wirelessly it's actually through the wires and so there should not be any emfs which i know is just he doesn't understand what he's talking about so i put the cage on on their meter when they installed it and for the first about four months i saw the truck every single month have to come out and read my meter i haven't seen it since then so i don't know I don't know how they worked around it, but they're, they're reading it now, unless they're coming in at night and I don't know it. They're reading it now without having to drive their truck here. Um, I think that on some of the meters, they drive their truck, like when it comes to utility companies, they'll drive it down, down your street and their reception is close enough that they can get it. And I just feel like it blurs it enough where they had to come all the way up my half mile driveway to get a reading um, because they just drove their truck by it and then drove it by the other way and looked really slowly like, oh, she put something on there uh, and then left. So it was like, it's just enough um, where they had to come closer to read it. It should be the same with like your water meters, your gas meters, the truck will have to come closer to read it. Um, have you heard of the EMF paint? Yes, I have. It works. The one thing you need to think about though, it's really expensive for one, but for two is if you, completely paint the inside of your room with EMF paint and you have appliances inside the room, the radiation that your appliances are gonna be giving off because they are electric, okay, um, is going to be bouncing off of your walls and it won't exit the home as it normally would, it's, it's just gonna keep on bouncing. So you gotta think about that, your body's being re-exposed every time it bounces off of something. Um, so just keep that in mind because I actually almost did that in this home. And I actually almost ran metal behind the sheetrock. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, wait a minute though, your, even like your dishwasher gives off EMFs, your stove gives off EMFs. So, um, cause your wiring in your walls gives off EMFs. So it's great, but you have to think about the things that you're gonna have in that specific room that you're painting and make sure that those are not items and appliances that give off high EMFs because you obviously wouldn't wanna trap that within your home. 
Okay, Jackie, can you find this copper fabric at material stores? You're going to have to call around to material stores. Um, depends on your location. I know like our local one definitely didn't have it. Um, Joanne Fabrics might have it. You're looking for copper uh, fabric. If you just get online, like on, onto um, DuckDuckGo or something, and type in copper EMF fabric, they sell it by the yard. There's several places online that sell it. Deborah, Donna, Sh I, don't know, I don't know how to pronounce that last name. Donna Schwinix, uh, Cultured for Life is a good channel for, for many things. I wonder if she is, um, she was culturedforlife.com. I bet you she is. But I'm sure that if you duck, duck, goat it and put in um, dried or freeze dried, dehydrated kefir grains, there'd probably be sites that would come up. I'm trying not to sneeze, guys. I've got pepper up my nose. <laughs> Um, I'm sure there's going to be sites that are going to come up that are going to sell the actual kefir grains. I have shipped kefir grains um, to people. Uh, it just depends on how far you are because I ship mine live usually. And so I usually feed them milk and then I ship it. And if that milk runs out and, and the box is kind of delayed, the kefir grains may die. What I should do is start dehydrating my kefir grains and then ship them out to everybody. Um, but maybe I'll do that this winter. It can be a winter project. <laughs> All right. And I think just for reference, in case anyone else is thinking about doing the same copper fabric on the back of that um, board, it's a really nice board. It says, and sew together, they built a life they love, which is great. And then I just hung pictures on it. Um, but if you're thinking about doing that, this is about a half a yard just for reference. Also, if your smart meter is on the outside of your house, um, and you're going to put a meter guard on it, you're going to want to hang some sort of a picture or something on that side of the wall using the same method I showed you over there with some copper fabric. Because the entire meter is wrapped, it's going to, the radiation is bouncing around in there and some of it may bounce into the home still. So if you were to hang some sort of a curtain or a, um, you know, like a picture with that copper fabric on the back, that'd be a way to keep it from coming in. So anyway, that's that. I think these vegetables are almost steamed over here. I wish you guys could smell it in here. It smells so good. Right. Put a fork in there and see. And the chicken was supposed to bake for 25 minutes. I don't know how long we've been on here live. Hang on. I'm going to move something. Almost an hour. Let me see if it's done. So I always temp chicken, you guys, because I don't like poisoning people. <laughs> so we're looking for 165 degrees on the chicken. I'm going to pull it out and take its temperature, and we're going to see if it's done. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, it's getting all toasty, guys. We're close, that's for sure. I'm going to move you guys a little closer so you can see. Because that's what you're here for, right? Is to see. Look at how delicious that is. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm going to get out my thermometer and find it. I have three, but see, the kids constantly... Temp their Play-Doh and you name it. Might just have to cut into it and see if it runs clear. All right, here it is. All right, so I'm going to go for a thigh. Mm, we're, we're temping. Hang on. The jury's still out. We're at... I think we're almost there, guys. It's 160, so we're about five degrees off, but look. Look at, look at, look at. Look at how crispy that is already. See that? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna put it back into the oven. 
Probably needs a good, a good like ten more minutes, I think. That's that. I set a timer so I don't forget. All right. Does anyone else have any other questions or anything else? Because once again, I'll stay on as long as you guys want to. It's gonna be good. It smells so good in here. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys keep coming back. That's so great. I would be lonely and talking to myself without somebody here. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can get the, I don't know, when I checked into the cookbook publishing last time, I think they said like two to three weeks on the printing. So um, that's why I'm like trying to rush to get this done because if I can get it to the publisher this weekend, and I can get it in the printing process, then it's like by the end of October, you guys could have the books in your hand, which would be so great. Um, so anyway, that's my plan. My plan is to get it uploaded this weekend. We'll see how long that takes. And then, like I said, I'll have all the details for you guys, and then I, I will put in the or first big order, um, and we'll work all that out, because I would like to do pre-orders so that you guys can go ahead and pay for your book, and I can put it right into... Um, right into the cookbooks, okay? Okay, so there's a question about my wood stove. So I actually have um, two wood stoves because I have two buildings. Um, I have the building that we're in right now and then I actually have an off-grid building. Eventually they're all gonna be connected, which would be great because I won't have to walk outside to go to my kitchen. But for right now, we have like a dining hall situation with a bathroom, which is around that corner. Um, and then behind me is the food pantry. Uh, and then on the other side, it's all of our bedrooms. So um, this stove will cook you out of this entire building. Um, there's nothing real special about it, I don't think, anyway. Um, we love our wood stoves, though. Our farm has lots of um, trees that are down, so it's pretty much free heat, which is great. And um, our location here... We lose power a lot when we get snow, like a typical winter. Um, we lose power a lot, and when we lose power, we are out for sometimes at least a week. It depends on how bad the storm was. Um, but because we live outside of town, um, into the country, they obviously try to get the electric restored in town first and then work their way this way. And because we live so rurally, there are a lot of trees and stuff that could go down and take out lines. and so. When it goes out, it's usually out for a while, um, depending on the storm. And so when we started building this home, I wanted to make sure that I had a way to cook. And I wanted to make sure I had a way um, to heat our home during these long power outages. And I know some people say, well, you should just get a generator. Well, that's a great idea, unless you can't get to town to get fuel or you don't have a way to store fuel when it's below zero. Um, and those cases could happen in, in any sort of storm. The roads might not even be passable to so get to town where we live um, and also storing fuel outside when it's negative 30 is just not a good option. <laughs> so anyway, we went with the wood stoves. So we chop and split and um, stack wood during the uh, fall and summer and spring months. And then we have plenty of heat for our home for the winter. Um, this is a really old homestead that we live on. And the tree belt that goes around it has not been um, cared for well because it's just been kind of deserted for about 40 years. So there's lots of trees, lots of wood, um, lots of dead trees that are waiting to be wood, <laughs> firewood into our pile. Um, so that is actually how we eat our home and we love it. Check the comments again. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we usually go around in t-shirts all winter long unless we have to go out to do to get more wood because our home stays so hot. Between the cooking and the wood stove, you just get really, really warm. So anyway. All right, you guys. Well, that is all there is to it tonight. Hope you guys like this live. I'm so glad you guys are uh, here with me. I'm so glad, glad you guys allowed me to be part of your night. Thank you so much, Diana, for coming. And Rhonda again, and I know Jackie was here. And who else? Who else? Who else? That's all I know about.
So you guys, thanks so much for being here with me. I really appreciate it every week. That's awesome. It's so encouraging for me. So I'll see you guys next week, hopefully, for the Mexican casserole. And like I said, that's a free schedule event already. So all you have to do is click um, notify me. Um, and like I said, the ingredients are down in the description box already. So all you have to do is click on that and you already have your grocery list. All right, you guys have a great night. Thanks so much. See you guys in the next video.